Before we get started in this video, I wanted to explain why there's several mistakes and mispronunciations throughout this video. It's because I was just getting over COVID and I still had kind of COVID brain. So please give me some grace. I think I've corrected most of the mistakes and put them on the screen. But if I don't, please let me know. Thanks. Hello, everybody. This morning, I'm going to be testing out the battery isolation manager, the L. I am BIM for the lithium 225. You can see here is a diagram and I've kind of just laid out my test scenario. You can see I have what my the chassis battery, the negative connected directly to the, the house battery. And then I have the positive terminal of the house going to the lithium, uh, going to the chassis terminal of the BIM. And then the positive terminal of the, the house battery going to the positive terminal of the battery on the BIM. And I installed for the ignition switch, I installed a switch here. So it tri triggers on the, uh, the isolation manager. And then uh, I also hooked up a ground. I'm gonna, there's also a connection for the, uh, for the, for the emergency start switch on the dashboard. But here's the three scenarios that we're gonna run through today. First one is when the chassis, these are the, this is directly from uh, the BIM supplier. Scenario number one is when the chassis battery is greater than 13.4 volts and the house battery is less than 13.3 volts, it's gonna connect for 15 minutes and then disconnect for 20. That's, that scenario number one is designed to simulate uh, driving down the road and the alternator kicking on and, it, and it running for 15 minutes and then uh, turning off so it doesn't uh, and cooling off so your alternator doesn't burn out. So I'm going to take you over the bench and show you what the first scenario looks like. Uh, now this looks like a little bit of a mess. That's why I showed you in the diagram. And you can see over here I simulated the chassis battery and the house battery. Now you, you know the chassis, these are old batteries I had laying around. So this chassis battery has to be above 13.3 volts. Well, it's not, it's like 10 volts. So what I have decided to do is let's put a battery charger on it and it gets it up to like 14 volts or something like that. So it's simulating a house a chassis battery that's above 13.3. This house battery is sitting at 12.4 volts right now. So it's uh, simulating that correct voltage being below uh, the, the necessary value. And so I have the BIM here connected. You can see I have the negative cooked to the negative and then coming off the positive of the chassis battery going into the positive of the chassis battery here and then positive on the uh, house battery going to the house battery here. And then I, of course I have the ground, <coughs> the ground wire hooked up so if I, t and I have a switch on the ignition wire, this is, this is wires to simulate the ignition the positive. So if I switch on the positive here, this little switch, it should flip on the BIM and run for 15 minutes. I have, uh, I have run some continuity tests. So there is no continuity right now between the two of those. So we should, it's hard to do this if you, if it, if there's continuity, you sure hear a beep, you hear the beep. Well, if I connect those two, there is no continuity. So that that's, tells me that this, this BIM is now disconnected. So if I hit flip that switch battery, house the, the ignition, it should charge the, the BIM and then it should connect them for 15 minutes. Uh, let's give it a try. I switched it on and now let's see what our continuity meter says. I didn't hear a click, but I do have continuity. I definitely have continuity. So yeah, so I'm going to start my stopwatch and I'll come back in 15 minutes. Okay, quick update. I started the test. You can see the, the ignition switch is on. So therefore power 12 volts is going to the ignition terminal this chassis battery voltage is greater than 13.4 volts 
the house battery is less than 13.3 volts. So what this is simulating is as we're driving down the road, the alternator is charging and I have a, a, a battery charger hooked up to the, the chassis battery to simulate the alternator. So the alternator is charging, the house battery is low, this BIM switch is connecting those two terminals and it's charging. And I have, it, I have a, a clock set. It's supposed to turn off after 15 minutes. So I'll come back in a few minutes and, and tell you what it did. Okay, you can hear my continuity meter running. And it says we've got continuity across those two terminals. I'm approaching 15 minutes. So I'm going to hold on here for a second and see if it clicks off. There it goes. Just right on schedule, 15 minutes. Turned off. So now it's supposed to stay off for 15 minutes. I mean, stay off for 20 minutes and then turn back on. So I'll bring you back on when it's about that time. Okay, I'm back. Uh, it's been 20 minutes and I, I wasn't paying attention to the clock and it clicked on and started charging without me. But so right now I'm gonna go ahead and hit the continuity meter and you can hear it turn on. That means I've got charging happening between the two ports. So that's good. And then I'm gonna check the voltage on each side. So the voltage on the, the chassis side is that one. And I'm gonna check it and it comes in at 14.55, which is correct. Then I'm gonna switch it to the, the house side. Again, switch it to the house side. It should be exactly the same, 14.55. So it does come on after 15 minutes and uh, so I guess I'm gonna be moving on to test number two. Test number two is uh, charging the opposite direction when the, it's going from the house battery to the chassis battery. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and give that a test. Okay, everybody, I apologize. I, I failed to hit the record button when I was doing scenario number two, but let me describe what happened. In scenario number two, it's, it's simulating when that RV is sitting in storage or sitting in your driveway someplace and the chassis battery is weak and the house battery is strong. Chassis battery is less than 12.5 volts. House battery is greater than 13.5 volts. What happens is that the BIM closes and it connects for one hour and it allows the house battery to charge the chassis battery. It's like a trickle charge. Now the key thing for this scenario is that there does not need to be any power to the ignition pole or to the signal pole of the BIM. In other words, there's no 12 volts that are required for the ignition pole or 12 volts required for the signal pole. The BIM will just naturally connect the house battery and chassis battery for one hour, then it'll disconnect and reevaluate those voltages and reconnect. And I simulated that and it did in fact work. So I just wanted to document and tell you what happened. Okay, we've done test one, scenario number one and scenario number two. Scenario number one is when the chassis battery is, is large and the house battery is small. As you're driving on the road, we verified that it connects for 15 minutes and disconnects for 20 minutes, that worked. Number two, we basically, we connected the chassis and house battery together. The chassis battery was weak. The house batteries are doing a trickle charge into the chassis batteries like when it's sitting and we we did that and it connected for one hour and then it disconnected for two minutes the last scenario we're going to run is the auxiliary start and what that is is when on the bim when positive wire from the house battery is connected to the signal of the bim and then it uh, opens the circuit so that the, the house and chassis batteries are connected so i'm going to go over to our setup and I've simulated that here. You can see the BIM. I have a hot wire coming off of here through a switch. This switch represents the, the uh, voltage, represents the uh, current coming from the house battery. You can see that right now I have the, and the, the voltmeter connected to the chassis battery, which is there and there. So when the voltmeter right now reads 10.46, so nothing's connect, connected to the ignition pole of the BIM, just the signal. So what, what I'm gonna do, this is gonna simulate pushing the button on the dash of the RV to jumpstart the RV. Again, the house battery is strong, the chassis battery is weak, we need to jumpstart it. So when I click this on, it should provide power to the signal, 
and, and close that connection and our voltage should go up on the, the chassis battery. So let's give it a whirl. I'm gonna put it close enough so you can hear it. There goes the click coming over. Now we're 12.6 volts. So the chassis, the house battery is now charging the chassis battery. I turned that, just turned that off and you should hear a click. That means it disconnected. And again, the, the voltage on the chassis battery goes down. So that, that's a little quick bench test of the BIM.